All right. So we'll call the meeting to order for November the 1st, 2022. I welcome everybody, uh, all our incumbents and our newly elected members of council for their first regular meeting. Uh, we have on video tonight CFO Ganita and the fire chief, uh, Darren Fedorchuk. Result of the agenda for the November the 1st, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Number three. Result of the minutes of the October the 18th, 2022 regular meeting of council and the October 27th, 2022 special meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving down to communications, 6.1. Result of the letter dated October the 17th, 2022 from the Minister of Environment, Climate and Parks regarding the Waste Reduction and Recycling Support Program be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? You have seen the letter there from the Minister in regards to the, the, uh, the grant that we received. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Result of the letter dated October the 3rd, 2022, from the Federal Minister of Justice regarding our questions and uh, former uh, Bill 75 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, it was certainly not a pleasure, but I had a one of our boss and one of our constituents come to my door at home tonight, and uh, I know we're all excited about crime from a negative perspective and the things we want to do about it. But I'm of the opinion after tonight that we have to get more aggressive. When people tell me they're afraid to walk down the street, they're afraid to go to their place of work, it's, it's we have to. Uh, do whatever we can. I realize we're limited and the man was very complimentary about our RCMP and all the things that they're doing and trying to do. But so frustrated and fearful. So uh, I know it's on our itinerary, I know we're going to work on it, but the minister, the letter from the Minister of Justice, which we're looking at here, basically says, uh, I'm not sure if you can do anything. And, and I, I, it's not a disrespectful letter from the minister, but it's one I think maybe your, your worship, you might like to reply to, hey, this is all nice and nice and beautiful that which you've written, but what are you going to do to help the people right now? And I have empathy for those in need, of course I do, but I have a lot of empathy for the people who are on Main Street and in, in our community. And I, I think we have to reply to Minister, uh, Minister of Justice, Mr. Lametti, and say, hey, that's not enough. Yeah, I, I, when I read the letter, I was a little bit disappointed myself as well. Uh, I do know that the, um, the minister pointed out that some discussion with uh, Minister Gertzen as well, so I'm sure that we will hopefully get a chance to meet up at the AMM. Councilor Medwood. Um, well, just to kind of, I guess, maybe piggyback on that, uh, is this some of the stuff we will be discussing in some of those breakouts that was mentioned in the yes. last week? Yes. Okay, so we are going to have an opportunity to speak with them soon? Well, we're hoping for that okay. because we have made requests. Yes. Uh, Council Morio. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the letter, like it's appreciative that uh, the Minister of Justice from um, the federal uh, government has responded to our request or uh, Your Worship's letter, uh, but I find it disheartening that uh, we had pointed out that it was a federal act that uh, C-75, which is creating uh, the grief of what prompted this letter, which our provincial counterparts in justice has, and the RCP have consistently told us that it's a federal act. And here they're bouncing us back, stating that uh, the provinces have, um, are free to work within their own systems, um, which I feel it's like the, the political hot potato here that they, that they created, where we created a problem and no one wants to really take a look at it or take responsibilities and they just want to bounce it back between jurisdictions. So. Um, 
I think as Councillor White has mentioned, I think uh, this letter deserves a response that uh, we need to uh, get clarification from uh, his, uh, uh, Mr. Lamanetti as to what he refers to uh, putting the ball back into uh, uh, Mr. Gertson's hands and regarding to uh, Bill C-75 when it deals with uh, bail conditions and granting bail uh, which is a significant problem with two of our crime issues here in, in Swan River. So um, I know uh, Minister Gertson from the province has repeatedly said it's, it's a federal responsibility, it's a federal act that has created this issue um, and they feel for it. They're in communications with the, the federal ministry um, on it, but uh, for the federal department just to point us back to the provincial jurisdiction, I think is inappropriate. Thank you. Councillor Bobbin. Uh, just on this subject, would that be something that we could bring forward at AMM to, in the form of a resolution towards all municipalities voting on it and AMM can approach the federal government on behalf of all municipalities? In it's the maybe province? something that we could probably uh, approach, but it would be too late now to get that resolution to the table because that would be done at our uh, district level. Okay. Um, but definitely, I think that we need to bring it up. I had a good conversation with uh, Mr. Volkoff yesterday on some of these matters, so uh, we really need to get a chance to meet with uh, with Justice. Councillor Bobak, you're still on. So would that be something <laughs> that uh, Your Worship would be entertained speaking at it at AMM? had a chance to be at the mic. If any member of council chooses to speak at the mic to the to the minister when the minister is there during the bear, bear pit session, you have every right to do so. Thank you. Councilor White. Yeah, that's a good point. And there's two opportunities <laughs> I see we as council to, to have. One is a new open form of questioner because invariably something will come up about crime then any member of our team could go up and say, hey, the feds are saying it's a province, the province is saying it's the feds, this is unacceptable. I believe our little community is one of the highest in the province. I'm pretty comfortable in that. I'm, I'm searching some numbers right now. And conversely, the other time you alluded to, Your Worship, is uh, at the bear pit session, we're assuming the Minister of Justice will be there, and we're all entitled to stand up and say, hey, I'd like to ask the Minister a question. So two opportunities, good points, thank you. And, and further on that, uh, in our uh, one of our call meetings prior to the AMM departure, we will need to organize and, and discuss some of the key points of what we want to speak to the minister about, so that we're because usually we've got about 20 minutes, so we need to make sure we pick some uh, points that we need to, to bring up. Go ahead. That'll be on uh, next week's uh, committee of whole agenda. Okay, thank you, Councilor Madlib. Um Is by chance one of the committee of the whole meetings prior to the AMM going to give us a little bit more? background for us new councillors as to uh, what has, I guess, been in the works from council regarding our crime and situation? Yeah, council will receive a package and we'll have background information on every topic that we're going to discuss with the minister and then we'll have we'll have our complete goals that, and we also provide the minister with the package so you will be informed of, I guess, the history of the issue, what we've done in the past and what, what our goals are. Okay, but will we be di like kind of bringing us new members up to speed in one of the COWs? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. I just wanted to double check because I'm just I feel like I'm behind the eight ball here. Yeah. So, <laughs> as I mentioned last Thursday night, if there's something as we're going through and you got questions about that, you obviously we'd be coming up in a in a town meeting. Start writing those questions and, and, and getting ready for them because that's a great opportunity for those e those meetings to uh, to have those discussions and answer or ask those questions. Go ahead. Can I just point out that I'm not really sure what I want to ask until I know I don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> so am well, I? But, okay but if you do, do well, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But if you do, like if something gets spark, you know, then absolutely write it down. Yeah. No, I I'm cool with that. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm okay to just kind of if one just pops in my head to just kind of go with it. Oh yeah. No, that's okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a steep something. learning curve. Ah uh, no, sorry. No. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 6.3 result of the letter dated October the 19th, 2022 from the Federal Minister of Public Safety regarding the RCP service be reviewed. Moved by 
Consul Morio or Deputy Mayor Wintour, or jeez, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor uh, Morio, second by Councilor Baldwin. Discussion. Go ahead. Uh, again, different minister, but similar topic uh, from Mr. Mendicino. Um, again, it's issues that have been raised, and it's just deflecting and it's not providing the answers or responses to the questions or suggestions that we've asked um, in regarding to the RCMP unionization costs and the retro pay. Um, we know that FCM is taking this uh, fight forward uh, along with uh, municipal representatives and the province of Manitoba um, for the federal department to absorb all retro costs um, due to their last uh, collective bargaining agreement. Uh, since we were never at the table or considered or consulted on that. So hopefully we hear some positive news on that. But uh, from his letter, um, there's no decision been made on that, which is disheartening, but uh, it's uh, just another verbiage of passing the buck. Same thing with the Body Worn Camera Initiative. That's an initiative that they've put forward that they have never consulted with the provinces or um, the contract uh, providers, the municipalities. Uh, regarding these costs, um, they say they are going to be absorbing the cost for the first few years, which is the capital cost of the cameras itself, but the ongoing operational costs um, for that program, which will be borne by the municipalities or the contract uh, people. Um, again which is we've never been consulted on that project which is unfortunate so it's it's again it's another deflecting of the uh, thing and then finally uh, their decision to remove um, the federal officer from our First Nations which decreases the complement to this detachment along with other detachments in our district um, is disheartening and he hasn't provided a reason in, or provided a reasoning as to why they did that, which was asked in the question original letter. So, again, with all the challenges with crime and lack of uh, members, to pull a federal member um, out um, without explanation when asked is uh, again just disheartening and deflecting it to other departments, which he's not providing the answers we're all seeking for. So, again, a letter that I'm not impressed with. I might be a little <coughs> confused and unclear. Did they actually um, pull the officer from our services, or it's just been reallocated to the First Nations and therefore reduced the, I guess, the responsibility of the detachment to necessarily be sending officers out there? They did have a dedicated member. That was for First Nations, and they have removed that individual, that member. Okay, so there's. And if you in in the letter, it stated that they had other program or other ideas of how they were going to deal with uh, crime on First Nations. So um, that's for them to uh, respond or to analyze, I guess. But right now, yeah, they they didn't remove that member. Okay, so member's been removed, and there's no active coverage in the First Nations, so our members that we have here at the detachment are still uh, responding respond. to calls? They would respond. Okay. Yes. okay, thanks for the clarification. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.4. Result of the building and demolition permits 5422 through 5922 with the total estimated value $457,500 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a question. Yeah. What do these numbers mean and represent? Uh, uh, go ahead. Like the value, do you mean? Yeah, like I see some zeros and then I see some positive numbers. Is this money we're actually taking in or no. this is just the value of... That's the estimated value, so that goes to the assessment branch. Uh, so for the one that's 300000 it's estimated it'll cost 300000 The ones that are zero, it's because they're a demolition, so uh, it's being removed. If so. I can just clarify, 
Is the 300000 the cost of the actual renovation or the total value of the home after the renovation? <laughs> it would be... Because I'm just thinking that's going to be one heck of a nice kitchen otherwise. <laughs> it's an apartment building. Oh, okay. Then that might yeah. explain yeah. why. Yeah, because so it's, it should be for the work that's being done. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood what the dollars were representing. Okay, so that's basically the assessment value on the home or added to the home? Yeah, yeah it's okay. an estimated value and then assessment. But then this information goes to assessment branch, so then they can know you know, which ones are higher priority, you know, if they see one for 300,000, then they know they got to get an assess it right away. Or if there's one for 5,000, then they know, okay, well, that one can wait a little bit before we do a reassessment kind of thing. Okay, thank you for the clarification. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.5. Resulted the uh, letter dated October the 7th, 2022, the Royal Canadian Legion Branch Number 39 regarding the presentation of the town's wreath on Remembrance Day be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Down to 7, 7.1. Result of the Protective Services Report for September the, uh, 2022 be received. Moved by Council Morio. Oh, <clears throat> now we have a hard time remembering all this. Deputy Mayor mm -hmm. Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. So anything that's in the report, that you get a chance, you can ask the um, Director any questions. Councillor Medwood. This question might not be specific to this report, but as a member of the committee, that deals with uh, water, wastewater, and all that fun stuff. Do I have? Do I need permission, or am I allowed to contact Darren just to help him educate me? So yeah. I have any any time. Yeah, you know, if you want to speak with Mr. Harvey about that, then absolutely. Any member of council will go and visit the directors if they're not sure what, if if it's a utility or if it's protected services or if it's. Um, anything they can go and get clarification on anything. I invite you to do so. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, and not just specific to your committees. Like, you know, if you're not on the transportation committee, but a resident comes up and says, "Hey, I have this issue with paving or curb and gutter." By all means, uh, let me know. And then uh, same with the foreman, because him and I talk every day, kind of thing. Uh, the one thing we ask is if you see someone like a public works employee or a arena employee uh, doing something and you think they should be doing something else, bring that to myself or to Jordan, the foreman, uh, because you know we have a schedule for the day and know what they're up to kind of thing. And you know, even if you think, hey, you're just kind of pointing something out or whatever to one of the employees, they may take it as, well, the counselor's telling me to do this, I better stop what I'm doing and go do that kind of thing. So, yeah, if you come to a director or the foreman uh, with any of your concerns, for sure. Absolutely, fair enough. Um, I just know I'm gonna have a steep learning curve and need some help, so yeah, thank you. for sure. Yeah, everybody will. Did you have something? Just to say that there's, there's, a, there's a lot. So it's expected that, like for the next year, you might, it's okay that you didn't know about the, the water rate increase process so you know at, at any time whenever these things come up and you see them just schedule time with the director and myself and we can walk we can walk you through the history the current and the, and the future of whatever topic it is perfect thank you councillor white uh, the dutch elm disease trees uh, i'm hoping that the, the areas where those trees are that the residents in that immediate area are being advised uh, yeah, we reach out. We have an authorized an access authorization form. 
uh, for anyone where we have to go onto their property. Uh, so we contact them and anyone, if we're following it onto their property, like neighboring property, we reach out to them. Because that's a pretty sensitive issue with some of our bosses. And I think, and I think if they're communicated to, here's why it's happening, it'll make it a lot easier. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Mario. <coughs> Just a question regarding the street cleaning with the leaves. Has the sweet street sweeper been broken down again, or was it just delayed due to the major water sewer repair that we had? Uh, no, we got it up and running again, uh, so. but then there was a more serious electrical issue, so it's going to be down for a little bit until we can get someone to take a look at it. Okay, so hopefully the snow stays off until... We yeah, we got uh, major streets with the major leaves on it kind of thing. Um, so it just depends how long it takes, but uh, we don't get it before the snow. Um, we'll have it first thing in the spring kind of thing, any of the leaves that are left behind. Okay, uh, okay. so I have had a number of people asking, like, why I haven't seen the street sweeper out this fall yet, like they normally do with this, picking up the leaves. So yeah, maybe yeah. a little bulletin on the, our website saying that we're having mechanical issues with the street sure. sweeper that'll be out. So, anything further? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, Councillor Reports. Councillor Bobbick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to speak a little bit on the watershed uh, with the elections, I don't <coughs> seem to think it affects the town of Swan River too much, but I mean it. At the same time, there will be an election at the watershed in January. Uh, right now, I'm the chair of the watershed right there. As I was chair through the town of Swan River as a community member, and Councillor Delorier was as a council member. So at this time, my recommendation would be to have a resolution to make Councillor Delorier the community member, and I would stay on as as chair. the town chair. So I, the chair will be at the, the election in January, but I'll be representing it as a council member, not as a community member. And with that, it's not that, that none of the councillors here could not be that if they wish to do so, just that the council glory has had a few years at the table there and is well versed in watershed. Okay. But if any councillor has uh, an interest in watershed, please step forward. Okay. Well, we can bring that resolution at our next meeting then, and if any other member of council would rather be uh, on that committee uh, or board, then um, please feel free. bring it forward. Yeah, please feel free to phone me. I think it will be a rundown on the watershed. And at any time, you know, councillors, if you feel you want to know what the watershed is, stop in there. The staff will give you a crash course in no time. Mm -hmm. Actually, pretty interesting, actually. You have a question for Councillor Balvin? Question more maybe a more of a statement. Okay. Um, I think last we did that last week at our inaugural thing. We, if you look on the appointments, you are now the council rep, and, and Mr. Delory is now the committee rep. We passed that last week. What did we? Yeah. And yeah, Jason Delory accepted oh. uh, the request today, and the resolution will be on the fifteenth. Way okay. ahead of me because of my memory. Uh, go ahead. I thought the. Um, Committees were tabled until this week. No, they were passed last week. Oh, and, okay, and they, then I misunderstood. And, that. and they, they can be, like we said, that they could be uh, changed if we feel that there's some positions that someone may not be comfortable with, that we can make some amendments to that. Not so much change, but questions. Okay. Well, we can do that at, uh, you know, if it's in a cow meeting or something, if you have some questions about it. Okay. Okay. And I guess I go to that. But it is Councillor Bobbick's. Uh, and I, and I go that it says appointments as a council Bob because a community member. So, yeah, okay. Uh, just to speak a little bit on the landfill, I talked with Director Harvey today and also CAO Poole on this. Um, I do believe at least once a year uh, we, the committee should meet to go over the landfill just, and at the same time invite our partners to be involved in that, which is we are in Swan Valley West, just to review the landfill operation in the years and what's coming forward. So I guess we'll give them a little time to pick their 
chair if he's out there and then I'll get a hold of the committee and we'll uh, move forward with that. But I, I think it's very important that we invite them to these meetings and get them involved in, mm -hmm. in the Absolutely. operation. So. We, we had done that in the past, but uh, well, it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, speaking with the landfill, I talked with uh, Director Harvey there a bit. We have a little bit of an issue with rubber tracks. Like large tractors now, um, skid steers are all rubber tracks. They cannot be recycled. So they're ending up in our tire pile, which they will not accept. So that's something that we're going to speak forward at AMM. Yeah, we have that uh, as an item for AMM. Um, so we have our tire pile and every time tires are sold there's a fee that's charged to the consumer and then that fee goes towards Tire Stewardship Manitoba and uh, Tire Stewardship Manitoba manage tire recycling and they have reliable tire that collects them for them and recycles them. And uh, we're just starting to see rubber tracks start to show up because uh, more farmers are switching over to rubber tracked tractors. And uh, so I inquired with them if they collect uh, the rubber tracks in addition to the tires, and they said no. So I reached out to Tire Stewardship Manitoba, and they weren't aware of a recycling program for rubber tracks in Manitoba. Uh, so then I reached out to our environmental officer, and she wasn't aware of one, but she was checking with her superiors. And uh, when I check online, for rubber tracks that comes up with like Texas for recycling. Uh, so I think it'd be worth talking to the minister about that, that, you know, they saw the benefit in applying these fees to rubber tires so that they could be recycled and not end up in landfills or behind people's yards kind of thing. So it makes sense that the same thing would happen with rubber tracks because they're both rubber with metal inside, so it takes a little bit of effort to recycle them. You can't just grind them up. And uh, I think it would be a good point to bring up with the minister that they should look at applying a fee for the rubber tracks similar to the tires, and then just add that to uh, tire stewardship's mandate to handle them for recycling. So that just came up in the past week or so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bob, you're still on. Uh, just to stay on the subject of the landfill, uh, we spoke a bit about the company in town here, the Green Arrow, that can measure piles with uh, a drone and stuff, but at the same time, it can measure the volume what's left in our cells. So I would strongly advise that my, to use this company, that we would use them to measure not so much the piles, which I think you probably do a very good measurement right now, but at the same time, you turn loosely to kill two birds with one stone, measure the, the piles that are ground up, plus we will know what volume we have left in our cells, and if you do this constantly every year, you would have a data telling you that you have three years, five years left, or four years, you would know by the amount of volume. If you've gone out there in the spring of this year and then go out there now, it's filling up extremely fast. So right now, I do believe we need to have an engineer's stamp to be put on before we can build a new cell or finish the cells that are there. Even amend the cells. Even amend the cells. So that was something that council should be looking forward because time is coming fast. So that uh, we pretty well have the plans, right? Mr. Poole? We have our own plans. Obviously, they're just not stamped by an engineer, and that's what needs to be done. We need to move forward on that. So that's something that maybe you should bring up in a committee or a whole? <coughs> yep, I will. Uh, just to refresh it, we will be going in what time we go near, start budgeting. Sometime in December? December. Yeah. So would something like street by the post office would be that something we would talk on at that time uh yeah there'll be as in paving so. yeah I'm, yeah I'm sure director Harvey will have the capital plan ready for council so as for new councillors if they have something that they think would warrant being put on next year's budget would just be the time just for them to speak forward and mention stuff and then we could 
as a council as a whole know that this is of interest to them that they'd like to see this stuff happen moving forward with their budget. Yeah. Okay. And I guess with that I would mention uh, First Street and Tenth Avenue, the sidewalk there I mentioned that before and also I can't remember who's in charge of the cemetery but I have a, a concern that the cemetery should have a caretaker there so at this time I'd like to put that out there that this could be something that could come up in the budget in the future. And again that can be brought forward to the committee of the whole. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Borcha. I don't have anything. Okay, that's Thank fair. You. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's good. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, didn't have any formal meetings since last week, but been reviewing the new portfolio and you'll see there's a lot of the items that are in camera sessions that will give the, the general government finance uh, committee um, portfolio some direction moving forward once we have those discussions. So other than that, uh, nothing for me in this short week. Okay, thank you. Actually, I guess I do you have to go back? Yeah, okay. I do. Okay, um, good. It's kind of off the thing. I had uh, talked to you a little bit about it uh, after, and maybe it's more for the committee as a whole, I'm not sure, but uh, wanting to maybe put a resolution forward to um, uh, start maybe organizing a community 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 committee to start fundraising, looking into grant applications with respect to the arena, whether we're doing a retrofit, whether you want to pursue a build or whatever, and just get that kind of gear going and people interested. Uh, I was approached by uh, Swan Valley Minor Hockey and they're very interested in assisting with that and helping out any way that they can as well as the obviously the Swan Valley Snap Feeders. So yeah. I guess that's something. No, I definitely uh, in our conversation that I said that it's a, it's a good idea. It's maybe just a little too soon but we are going to have those meetings at the end of November mm -hmm. uh, to bring everybody up to date on, on the Johnson controls with the, in regards to the arena and then we can kind of start to formulate that plan but definitely uh, I feel that we need to have the community uh, people involved mm -hmm. without a doubt. Anything further? No, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Powell. <clears throat> no, not too much other than this is where we basically talk about anything that we've had or anything typically we've the things that you your your committees that you've been on if you're on library as an example you would report back to council about that uh, some smaller things whatever but mainly things that you're involved with okay okay no nope. perfect okay Councillor white uh, paid political announcement uh Bell outdoors i believe netted fifty thousand dollars <coughs> on their dinner which goes to our valley. So uh, kudos to that team. Okay. Uh, when we hear from the other G4 representatives, I'm hoping uh, Mr. Poole will be nudging them to tell us who their representatives are on the respective committees, specifically one that I'm, I'm concerned about would be uh, medical professional recruiting, because Councillor Powell and Councillor Morial and I are on that. And there's two big priorities in my mind, and some of us, we've exchanged a few emails, the bridging program where the LPNs can get trained up to our ends right here, and the doctor recruiting. And we've been invited to go to Brandon and or Dauphin to look to meet with the first year residents, who I suspect would be better than the second years, because the second years are already committed. So I'll be putting in with the blessings of my two peers here, we'll be hopefully hear from them. And once we know who's on that committee or not, we'll get together and make a plan where we're going with that. Uh, I would nudge, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio to get the PMH board to get out of Brandon now. The COVID looks to be nearly over. And in the past, they've come to the representative communities like ours. They've invited our council, other councils, to what's happening in PMH, where are we going, how are we getting there. Then we could ask about doctor recruiting and bridging. So I'm hoping something's happening in that world. I'm hoping the mayor has heard from uh, the Minister of Health relative to our CT scan. Anything happening there? There is some things happening, yes. Oh, good. That's good to hear. Uh, there's a, uh, the Albert Shark Friendship Center is having their AGM this Thursday at 4 o'clock. And uh, I'm sure anybody can go, but you can't vote unless you're a member. Yeah. It's a very expensive membership, a dollar. <laughs> I, I splurged about my wife in membership today. And uh, I think more as important on uh, Friday, the grand opening of the new uh, daycare. There's one little glitch I just found today when I was over to make 
afternoon. Now remember, you have to have, if you're going to the post meeting, you have to have your card that says you've had all your shots, because they won't let you in unless you've had that card. So uh, I just found that out this afternoon. Uh, so. Sorry, is that the AGM? No, not for the AGM. That's a separate thing. That this for the daycare. For the daycare. Okay, gotcha. Just for the daycare, yeah. which is at 1.30 on right. Friday. Yes. And I'm assuming all this council is, uh, ha of course, is invited to attend. Uh, the settlement services are having their 25th year anniversary, and they've sent us all a note. I think we all should have got it. But what they like from us is uh, confirmation whether you're attending or not, because they have to know how much food to have, where to go, how much, and that's. Uh, I'm assuming is that the veterans hall wasn't on the uh, wasn't on the agenda. And last but not least, I've been brought to my attention. There's a program called Live Barn. Your recreational people will know all about it. I didn't, so you can watch the, the barn people come to Swan River. They set up the cameras in our arena for nothing, no cost, zero. So people in Grand and Winnipeg, Timbuktu, Thailand can watch other than the Stampeder games, because people have to pay to go into them. They can watch their grandchildren playing, family playing. Conversely, if we're out of town and we have a grandchild, like, we can watch. It costs us nothing. I'm not sure why we don't have it. We don't have the Director of Recreation, but we certainly look into it. And, right. asked, uh, and we do have the rec chair here. So yeah, we'll, uh, I wrote it down. I will look into it. And I think uh, the Snap Eaters is hockey TV. I yeah. believe that yeah. there's a broadcast. So it's, it should almost be set up. But yeah, Live Barn's seen it. Most of the rinks. I know Dolphin has it now. It's free. Yeah. So I'll leave that with you, uh, Councillor. I will look into it and get Thank you very done. much. That's all I can ask. Perfect. That's it for me, sir. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bedwood. Okay, well, I'm obviously unprepared because, well, one, I just started on Thursday, and I don't believe I've had any meetings, but this might be a good opportunity for me to ask one of the questions about this committee appointment is, I have no idea who's on these committees with me or how I find out when meetings are happening okay. or so. So let me, I'll just answer that yeah. for all of you. Right now, because it's the appointments are early, we're waiting for all our partners to all have their meetings and appoint theirs. You will be on a list uh, of emails that will be shared with all the other CEOs, and you will be <coughs> notified by email when and where the meetings will happen. So if it's library, if it's vet, or whatever committee meetings, you will have to be notified. It may not be for a little while. Some of these, some of these committees only meet maybe like two times a year, some three, three or four, but you will get notified. Okay. It's just maybe a little early right now. And where do we get information on them? Like for example, communities in Bloom. Like I know they're primarily responsible for the flowers throughout the town, but what's their mandate? Like where can I get information on the whole scope of what they do and? Yeah, yeah, we can email contacts. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about their history. I can tell you what they do. Like they, they do lots of flower works around town, Main Street, cemetery, all that stuff. But uh, in the parks. But as, as for the history, I don't know. I'd have to refer to a long-term community member. But we can provide that. Because okay, I was going to say, especially all three that I'm on here on the lower list, um, I suppose since I'm actually paired with Councillor White here on one of them. I can maybe pick his brain some afternoon. Oh, we'll take uh, the other two, I'm solo, and I'm just like, <laughs> where do I get information? So maybe this was a good time to ask those questions. Yes, yeah, we can provide those contacts. <laughs> okay, to get perfect. Information if I can't provide the information. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Then maybe next time I'll have something. <laughs> you will. Are you? Are you? You're done. I believe so. Okay, Councillor White. Those are really reasonable questions, and I, I speak for all of your peers here. Of course we're available, and these two young men and the mayor are, go see them in their office anytime. Phone me up anytime for sure, but not before 10 in the morning. Uh, and, and just to also uh, point out, the, the former councillors, some of the committees that they were on, they, each of them said that they would be available if anybody ever wanted to contact them to ask them questions. And Councillor uh, Friesen was on the Communities in Blue. Yeah, okay. For sure. Uh, the other point relative to your discussion, I believe at the last meeting we amended, put on hold, stalled, whatever the appropriate term was, that 
appointment list, have you had a chance to go over and talk to people? Because it, was, it wasn't passed at that last meeting. Uh, yeah, it was passed. There was a discussion with it at the end, there was some opportunity for change. There's an opportunity for amendment, but it, the, it was passed. Okay, and when, we, when the, well, we'll just come talk to you when yeah. we wanted it. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Uh, that's a perfect example, thank you. Yeah. And I have this thing my, uh, my, my lovely young wife shared with me, I think it's really appropriate right now because this is our first meeting, and it's Dr. Patton, whoever that is. He says, teamwork, which is coming together is the beginning, that's where we are. Working together is progress, and I'm comfortable we will certainly do that. And uh, working together and keeping together is success. So I have every reason to believe it'll be uh, rewarding, wonderful next four years again. So thank you all. Okay, thank you. Thank Judy. You Thanks. Uh, thank you, Judy. <laughs> so uh, with myself, again, not much to report. Uh, other than after the election, I have reached out to the, uh, several mayors uh, around the province, congratulated them, Thompson and Dolphin and included, and a few of the other councillors as well. And I've also spoke to each of the Reeves that have been elected also in the Valley and reaching out to them. And the process for us to start to meet uh, with shared services or with um, our G4. So they're all willing and ready to go, but they got to get organized themselves too. So that's why with the committees and all that, it'll take some time before we hear all that. And it sounds like several of them are attending the AMM, so you'll have a chance to uh, rub shoulders and talk with them there as well. So that's it for me, Mr. Poole. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll have a written report for Council in December. Uh, just a couple of highlights, obviously working on the Council package for AMM. Uh, Prepping council for next week's cal meeting. Uh, I'd like to be a, a quicker than, than tonight's in camera session. Uh, managers are working on budget 2023, uh, as well as the 2023 fee schedule, which council will see in December. Uh, contacted Owen Ferguson from the community safety program to touch base on on the next coming months and, and uh, the pilot project that the province is entertaining, uh, performing evaluations, and then I just have some uh, specific dates as Councillor White mentioned, the Immigrant Services 25-year party December 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, November 30th, the Minister of Infrastructure, so he's, he's, he will not be at the AMM for us to meet with him. But uh, we will schedule, uh, it will most likely be a late, at the time isn't set yet, but it will be November 30th for a Zoom meeting with the Minister of Infrastructure. Uh, next week's Cal meeting, we'll just confirm the travel plans to the AMM. The town van will be going and we'll see who's, who needs to be picked up, the times and everything. So uh, uh, get ready for that. And the Remembrance Day rep, I assume it will be Mayor Jacobson. Okay, we can respond to the Legion, perfect. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Council White. Do you know what time you're leaving, sir? For AMM? Yep. Yeah. No, not yet. That'll be Sunday that, afternoon? It'll most likely be Sunday mid-afternoon, yeah. Okay. Council Bobbitt. So you mentioned that there was a meeting with the Minister of uh, Infrastructure? Uh, we requested one for the AMM meetings, so they did get back to us and said they will not be there, but they want to meet with us on November 30th by Zoom. Okay, that would have, that would have anything to do with the intersection? We have told him that it will be the intersection of Main Street and 10 North, uh, the crosswalk in the proximity of uh, 12th Avenue, and I cannot remember the third one. Those are the two big ones. The other one was the conservation parks. Right. It was on, on that at all, the, uh, the drainage of uh, uh, Titch Road or anything like that? Is that anywhere on that right there? No, that doesn't really benefit the... No, I it, no, it I, but it did come in, and I thought there was some conversation there, but we're still waiting for some report, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I just... I guess because ratepayers are asking what's happening at the intersection, so that at this time we would probably have a better app. After the meeting, we would have 
more answers. Definitely, they know that one's coming. Yes, yes. thank you. And on that too, they did say that they wanted to have a public consult anyways, right? Um, Deputy Mayor Moria. Um, with our meeting with uh, MIT, uh, Minister Pugh, um, that Zoom meeting, is it going to be just one-on-one -on -one with him and his department, or is it going to be like that fiasco disaster where we had it, us and several other municipalities um, do the hot mic thing? Yeah, we, we don't know yet. Because if it's that format, it's almost yeah. useless. Isn't it? Well, we need, well we, need, we know what to expect if it is, but I don't think we should deny it. Exactly. Maybe we can uh, relay that to the uh, MLA, and perhaps maybe he can put that out there. Uh, Councilman Edward. Was there a time mentioned for the November 30th meeting, or we don't have that confirmed yet? Just not confirmed yet. It'll most okay. likely be mid-afternoon. Okay. Typically around 2 o'clock. Okay. But not confirmed. All right. Thank you. Okay. And you're, you're, com you're done, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then moving on to 8, 8.1, result the Council of the Town of Swan River do hereby sit as Board of Revision to revise the assessment rules for the year 2023. Result, uh, further resolve that Lance Jacobson serve as Chairperson and Derek Poole serve as Secretary of the Board. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, it's carried. 8.2, result of the Town of Swan River sponsored ad for the Swan Valley Snowmobile Association map at a total cost of $157.50. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor White. I think this is a really, really inexpensive way to support the Sun Valley Snowmobile Association which probably spends hundreds of thousands of dollars maintaining trails and bringing tourism to our valley. I just, uh, I wish they asked for more, first of all. Okay, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio. Um, I have no issue with uh, the contribution or the, the cost of the ad. I just, looking at the ad and myself and knowing on where this is going to be put in the association, in the, like in the in their flyer or books and stuff like that. But the pictures that we got there are summer pictures. Wouldn't it be more appropriate to have some more winter type theme attractions that the town has versus a water slide, horses racing and biking and uh, flowers? Absolutely, we can ask for a change of it. Councillor Boychuk. Uh, just in speaking of the signs, I know I've just been traveling back and forth so much to golf and, and our Swan Valley Recreation. I guess it's a recreation, like welcome to the Swan Valley um, sign along the side of the highway there. Is like the brush is growing up in front, so who... That's the rise sign. Oh, yeah, well it's the, that one there. I never looked at that. I don't go that way as much. But Are you talking about the town entrance sign? No. No. I have the word. Yeah. Oh, yeah, rise. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Rise. yeah. yeah. We right now don't, don't have, have a rise board. committee. Okay. I'm on that. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I almost want to... Can't read it. No, no it's, well, it's, it's going to get to the point where you can't. Like, yeah. it's kind of, it doesn't look very professional. No, you know what I mean? When stuff enough. starts growing up in front of it, it's like, obviously, that's not a maintained or active, uh, which obviously doesn't so. They yeah, turned it about two years ago after we complained, and then. Yeah, okay. So basically, take a saw next time I go, just stop over and. I don't know if you did it last time, but that was the same issue you brought forward about a couple of years ago. I was going to take my, but I forget every time. I'm oh, heading down to Winnipeg on Friday, maybe I'll remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it'll be a race between you and I. Yeah, that's the deal. Okay. <laughs> I almost bought a little saw at Walmart the other day too for quadding. I should have done it. Maybe the stock for that game in. Yeah. Oh, we're not there. Right. Yeah. Team building. We'll 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 stay on. We're still speaking on the Swan Valley uh, Snowmobile Association uh, uh, donation, or I guess ad. So, was there any further discussion on that? Okay. All in favor. Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 
2021 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, well, it's unfortunate that it took this long for to get those statements. Uh, they are what they are. And basically we'll, I guess, wait and see what type of form will rise is recommended from the committee in the new year. But uh, as for the topic on hand of receiving their financial statements, uh, they are what they are and it's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, further discussion? Councilor White. Uh, it's very trivial, but, but they have on behalf of the organization, director, director, and nobody can read my writing, I accept that, but I have no clue who the people are and I, I think it's appropriate to put the person's name under there. So if I had a question, I could phone that director. It's on uh, page five of 15. So how do, you, how do you touch base with that individual? I, I guess it probably doesn't, it wouldn't hurt to have their name, but if, we, if it was current, let's just say, then we would know. The, the first signature is former Deputy Mayor Wintoni, and I believe the second signature is former Councillor Denson. Okay. Am I correct there, uh, CF Bonita? Correct. So uh, I was looking at those numbers, and I forget it's just fifty-six or sixty-six thousand dollars went to to uh, management. I'm trying to find those numbers again. Is, is that stopped right now? Nobody's putting money into it. It's well, I guess you could say it's kind of paused right now. Like so we did put money into it for 2022, but now we're just waiting to hear from the committee that we have uh, brought together to see what the future of RISE is going to look like. Okay, so that money didn't go anywhere. That our, our donation is sitting in the bank account still. That's correct. Yeah. I'm fine. Then. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29527 to number 29573, totaling $124,128.79 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5200 to number 5207, totaling $104,688.85 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $815 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposits totaling $7,484.44 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Bobic. Uh, check 29536, Municipality Swan Valley West is for $11,576.73 is a refund. I just would like to maybe an explanation on that for the new councillors on what we're refunding it for and how we came to that conclusion. CFO Ganita, can you answer that? I, yes, uh, we inadvertently included 911 costs in the fire protection calculation and so uh, Swan Valley West said they pay their own 911 costs and uh, it should, should not be contributing towards our 911 costs. So that refund is refunding the two years that it was inadvertently included in the calculation. That's right. Okay, thank you. So as between the two municipalities, are all, are all accounts in good standing? Uh, is that in regards to the checks, Councillor Balding? Do we owe that money to the OS money? I think that would be a separate question outside of the check explanations. Okay. 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 Further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, check number 29564 um, to an offer check to Enterprise for 2430 um, for the wooden storage box for public works. Like we're kind of box is that? Like uh, that's an uh, outstanding item with MPI for the truck, so we're expecting to get reimbursed that is storage of a truck wouldn't uh, storage box. That's just an outstanding item that's being dealt with with MPI. Okay, so it's not a storage box, it's a storage of the storage, truck? yeah. Okay, because I'm going, that's one massive storage box. <laughs> yeah. 
unless it's today's wood. Okay. Further discussion? Council White. Uh, Mr. Poole, when, when our team members go on the road, do they get a discount? Like when I go as a municipal person, I get a discount because I'm a municipal government. Do the people who work for the Thomas Fund ever get discounts? Uh, generally, yes. Yeah, a government employee discount at, say, a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk about it later then. Okay. Yeah, the questions that you have should really pertain to the the the, uh, the resolution, Councilor Balvin. That's fine. Okay. That's further dis so further discussion? That was right there. That's why I said okay. one. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the 2022 capital budget included $35,000 for emergency generator, and whereas the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 transferred from accumulated surplus, of which $35,000 was F uh, to fund uh, the purchase of a said generator. But whereas purchase of the generator is not possible before the end of the 2022 fiscal year, therefore be it resolved that $35,000 be transferred to the, from the accumulated surplus to the general reserve fund so that the general reserve fund can, use, can be used to fund the emergency generator in the fiscal year that it is purchased and installed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion. Councillor Medwood. I'm not sure I fully understand this. Um, is this basically saying that the five hundred and ten thousand dollars is in the um, sorry general reserve fund and earmarked solely for the use of the emergency generator, or it's only thirty-five thousand that's in the reserve fund? Well, the, the 2022 financial plan included 510000 transfer from accumulated surplus. Of that, 35000 was to pay for a project in 2022, which is the generator for this office. That project will not happen due to time. Uh, so instead of, instead of letting that go and rebudgeting, we are going to take that money and put it inside of a reserve to complete it in 2023. Okay, and is it earmarked specifically for that purpose? So it can't, that, that 35000 or whatever, can't be touched for any other reason or purpose? That's right, that's correct. Okay, and just so I can wrap my head around it, what happened with the remainder, the $510,000? Uh, that, that goes into our accumulated surplus account. So when we go through our financial plan, you will see our accounts and when we have a surplus it goes into that account so we were just basically taking money from that accumulated surplus to pay for that project say as opposed to raising taxes on the general rate. okay um, let me just reread this here and make sure the on the accumulated uh, surplus that we have or or any of the financials that you're, if you're not following it, I would invite you to also maybe visit with the CFO uh, and, and have a conversation and, and he can explain it to you like very well uh, on what all this really means because I can see the confusion. Like it, this can be very confusing. So uh, I do invite you to uh, visit with him as well. I probably will at some point. Um, so the $510,000 is what's currently in that accumulated surplus and the 35,000 was earmarked for the generator which is now being moved to is that kind of how it goes or no i actually don't know that if cfo ganita has it can take over he, he probably has the number of what's in there yes in uh 2021 the town in had a considerable surplus because uh, with facilities being closed due to COVID, there were savings there on uh, operating costs. And so for the 2022 budget, council decided to earmark the surplus from 2021 to use it for specific things. 
And so there was a, a list, like 26,000 for turnout gear, 50,000 for tractor, cab, mower, and blade, uh, 23,000 for pool hot water tank, um, and that pool security system, hall security system, arena security system, and fire extinguisher replacement. And then putting some into a tax stabilization reserve, 262,000 into a tax sta stabilization reserve. So 262,000 went into tax stabilization reserve and 248,000 was earmarked towards specific uh, capital projects. So uh, of the $510,000 total that was taken from accumulated surplus and put into the combination of the tax stabilization reserve and the various capital projects, 35,000 of that was for the emergency generator. And so council uh, felt that since it had been budgeted in 2022, but it wasn't going to be able to be completed in 2022, council wished to put it into reserve so that it's in reserve available in the year that it gets built and installed. So that's what this uh, resolution does, just put it into a reserve so that it's there for the future. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven eleven point one, result of the bylaw twenty two two thousand twenty two being a bylaw describing the Town of Swan River Council procedures, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion. Uh, go ahead. Um, I just have a couple questions to see if we can maybe, if we're looking at it for review and amendments, add in. Um, I noticed that under Agenda 7.0, it recognizes that a copy of the agenda shall be posted in the municipal office um, at the same time when the CAO shares it with us. Can we amend that to update and include posting it publicly on the um, website and the town app? You know, I mean, kind of post-COVID, I think a lot of people have shifted to electronic and make it a little more accessible? Is it possible to...? We, we can work if we do that already, uh, but we can absolutely have it worded in the procedures by law, yes. So, and just so you know, the, the first reading is done, and, and this bylaw will automatically go to the committee of the whole. So we will discuss all amendments and what it is. This is just the, these do require three resolutions. So the first one is to, you know, basically Get tell council this is going to happen. We are going to amend this bylaw, and it immediately goes on the next committee of the whole agenda. So we'll be, we'll be discussing the procedures bylaw, the organizational bylaw, which is next on the agenda, at the next uh, committee of the whole meeting to discuss these amendments, any ad any proposed additions, anything like that. So you have ample time to review the bylaw and and bring proposals just like that. Okay, so it's the committee of the whole where we do the yeah. nitty gritty, yes. These? Okay, because yeah, I made a few notes on this one. So I basically have to be thoroughly review them before next Tuesday? Yes. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> Four days was a little bit much to wrap my head around all of them. <laughs> yeah. So they started blurring together. I just want to clarify. <laughs> okay. Follow okay. steer in the tractor, don't you? What was Further discussion? Oh, Councillor White? No. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2, resolved that bylaw 23, 2022, being a bylaw to establish the organizational structure for the municipality <coughs> be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3, result of bylaw 24, 2022, being a bylaw to provide online assessment services 
to the town of Swan River, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right. 13. Result of pursuits of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have on the agenda the town growth plan and purchase services. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We're in camera. Uh, video. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10.40 p.m. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Powell. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.